Okay. Um, how much? Um, let's talk about the passport fees mm -hmm. because there seems to be people, diff Nigerians at different times that had to obtain their passport at different varying amounts of money. What is the standard passport fee? We always tell people there are different fees. People don't appreciate. Uh, uh, first, if you want to change your data, except for m women, this time we are very sensitive to women. Women who are changing their data due to marriage, due to divorce, due to widowship, they don't pay penalties. So when you go to passport office, you said, look, I want to change my name from Muhammad to Musa. Fine, you have done the court declaration, you have got all the documents. When we change that data for you, before we attend to you, you have to pay 33,000 Naira administrative fee. So before you pay, people would shout, we say, no, but we have made it clear. There is penalty fee for change of data. It is administrative fee paid to government. Secondly, it depends on the booklet you want. If you are an, an age over 60, you pay like a child because we have protection for age matters. If you are a young man, you want 48 uh, 32 page booklets you pay less but if you want how to much up, is the, uh, the one the, for 32 uh, booklets? 18 000, how much is the one for 8, 64 18 thousand is a fee for uh, 36 booklets and uh when you want 64 page depend on your age so it will be determined but what i assure you is that nigerians as far as they are concerned will try to remove in the new regime where we produce will remove the age differential will make it flat uh, a new fee is coming a new booklet is coming with improved security features with 10 years validity so definitely it will be more expensive than now, but we make sure that nobody collect any extra money from them. Mm. Pay the money online. Mm. I don't know why Nigerians complain. Which, look, pay your fees online before you come to passport office. That's why in Ikoi we launch a relationship with the Guaranteed Trust Bank. When you come, you have cash, go to the bank and pay. Don't pay to an immigration officer. If you like, pay online before you come. Mm. So we want to encourage Nigerians to pay online, no cash to immigration officers. If you pay online, you'll be more satisfied. Hmm. So, but what, what's the response to this cashless policy? Because we still... Ni Nigerians, uh, let, let me tell you, we have a lot of problems. <laughs> uh, somebody would rush to your office and say, I'm in a hurry. Uh, pay online, he doesn't want, he has a cash. That's why we responded by bringing a bank into passport office. Ikoi is the highest production uh, passport office in Nigeria hmm. and abroad. We have the highest number of uh, uh, customers in Ikoi. So we brought a bank. Guaranteed trust bank. You mm. come with the cash, go to the bank and pay. You will have paid online, you'll be treated. But officers should not take cash. That's what we have been telling people. And that's the solution for cashless. Mm. Now, let's come back to the issue of border uh, patrol. Mm. Um, Trans-border banditry is still uh, having a field day in some of these borders. What are you doing to check this issue of trans-border banditry and also human trafficking? Uh, first, I'd like to thank the government, the present administration, for investing a lot on border. Uh, they have invested on patrol bases. They have invested in vehicles. Take Katsina, for example. When we establish patrol base, we have been arresting people who want to depart from this country, even the wanted person. For example, we arrested somebody who had committed murder nine years ago. Huh? Nine years ago, he committed murder. Officers were able to arrest and hand over to police. We have prevented thousands of people from leaving this country because they want to go to Libya to save their life from that trip. Mm. We have also arrested many people who have attempted to enter our country illegally. A lot of Ghanaians, even at, at our airport, who want to use Nigeria as a transit to go to Europe. So I can say things have improved, but for us to do it better, when the technology building comes, we can patrol with the cameras, we can patrol with scanners. Uh, I'm telling you now, there's a border we can see real time online. There's a border in this country. I don't want to tell you the border. <laughs> we can see what is happening at that border real time online. Mm. So if we see things happening, we can tell the army if it is too big. We can tell police to assist us, but we can see real time online. That's so, the future. So wh why can't we have the same structure for all the borders? Government is because if they discover that uh, th there is no time, people would not know that uh, a particular border is being monitored, and they might find an alternative border. The minister of interior is working on e border. Uh, already, I think he, he has gone to council and he is going to present a memo to Mr. President yeah. on e border. E border means we'll be able to see what is happening real time online, including facial recognition. Yeah. Uh, if you enter our border, you don't have a passport, you cross certain said we can see your face, we can record who you are. 
Tomorrow, when you come back, we can take the same face. Even if it is in a camera, we can see how many times you have crossed our border and we know who you are. The minister is working. But I'm telling you, we have already one test case, pilot case, working in one of the borders. And if you like, I can take you to the command center to see it so that you are happy to understand it is happening. The solution is technology. And we should be allowed as immigration officers to continue with the technology so that when we see a lot, if it is beyond us, we can call the Air Force. If it is ground troop that is required, we call the Army. If it is smaller, we can call the police. Everywhere in the world, we don't need to put all our military at the border. Immigration with the technology can assist other law enforcement so that they can assist at appropriate time. That's the future of border control in Nigeria. What are you doing to equip uh, immigration officers sent to Boko Haram prone areas? Uh, just because obviously they need to be more equipped and um, they, they need better training to handle the exigencies that might be erupting from that area. I'm glad to say that in the last few years we are contributing a lot to fighting insurgency. What we are doing is that we are training them and we are giving them incentive. If you serve in JTF, you get automatic promotion if you are not at fault. So it's an incentive. Those who return they got automatic promotion to the next level because they serve their country very well. We decommissioned them and they have a choice to, to where they can serve effectively. It's a commitment. Those who went, they knew that, look, if we serve very well, we have the possibility to grow to the next level. So, but in and terms of training, because they, there's no point putting them at risk. That's what I'm saying. Before even they left, we camp them. The military gave us a base. We thank the chief of army staff. He gave us a base and trained them further. Uh, here in Abuja, there's a camp along the airport. They were trained and they were given great lectures of what to do, but we will continue to do training on the base, on the ground. Do, do, do you have a retritional policy, at least to show fairness and transparency in posting officers to these violent, violent we, we, we areas? Do. We do. What we do, two years at least, we have removed some and some have gone. I, some people have grown sick. Sick. I have like 15 officers <laughs> who said that uh, they were sick, and I really, they brought hospital documents. We accepted it, that they are sick, but we sent them to Borno State Command not JTF. If you can't work in JTF, since you are working another command, you're working probably in Kano or Lagos Airport, or you're working in uh, Namde Azuke International Airport. Now we post you to medical, you think you are sick, you go to doctors, doctors give you medical, no problem. We post you to Borno, it's the same command to serve, but not in JTF. So we have done that. The fairness is that you cannot refuse posting. You cannot, you cannot lobby not to go on JTF. But there, there seems to be a potential dilemma there mm. now, in, in the sense that those you've sent there, mm. At the point they are finally understanding the situation on ground, that is when they are being taken off. So what happens to experience on the job? Meduguri is not different from Lagos. Meduguri is not different from uh, any state. We are called to sub and we will sub and have visited the officers. So uh, we don't want officers to feel that because they are in Meduguri, they are in, uh, under punishment ground. They cannot be. Under punishment, and I want every immigration officer to consider it as an opportunity. Those who returned, they were very happy. Some of them were scared, but now they have learned a lot. They have become more vigilant. They have become more rugged. They can be more useful at our borders. So um, let, let me also ask this: um, What's the relationship between the Nigerian immigration officers and the IDPs now? Because initially there have been reports in the past about alleged extortion of money from uh, the base. The relationship is good. Those who are going, we have trained them more. We have informed them their commitment to serve their people, mm. not to extort money. Uh, Nigerians have been given, committed to give us uniform, to pay our salary, to protect them, not to fight them. So they but have, have you been able to bring the culprits to book? Yes, we have. We have. Uh, for example, I'm telling you, we have dismissed as many as uh, 30 officers. Even last uh, board meeting, we have degraded some officers. Anybody we found guilty, we are going to punish him, and we have been punishing people. Mm. Those who are doing very well, especially those who serve in JTF and certain places, we are going to give them special honor. So we reward and we punish.